in quale frutto si compromise il video. Now the first thing we want to agree on the time schedules. As you rightly said, we have an old copy of the timetable. Uh, the hour you have slotted to me was Tuesday 12 to 1 and um, Friday uh, 10 to 11. Now I think it would be wise to have three hours. Um, so we could agree which is the best for you. This is flexible. Um, I have completed my part for the geophysics postgraduate. I'm handing over to the other two gentlemen. The other course I have is fluence and instrumentation. So we meet in the afternoons, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So any other time suitable for you would be agreeable to me, as long as it is after nine. I think I had read when you have the old, but when it was out, I told the timetable lecture. Okay. It's so you SD, prefer? So it was ten. Ten. Okay. It is already ten on the one which was released. Is that okay, Mr. Neku, with you? But you can also. The, the there was an opinion you're making that because uh, you two agree bring, bring these hours together the three hours uh -uh. Well, in the stretch no it's not no, wise you can't manage you, okay. it's not you don't do too much you okay. see you because you tend to cover you and then get your tired but minute. two hours would be okay rather than those are the ones on friday yeah friday so uh, because most of the the beauty with this kind of course you do a lot of your own discussions, we meet together discussions. You're not going to be doing like undergraduate. I didn't come with them, but Friday was... Uh, no, Friday, 10, 10 to yeah, 10 to 11. It's a single or a double? A double. Yeah, it is double, 9, 9 to 11. Mm. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So we keep Friday or is that okay? Friday is okay with me, but I, I, I don't know. I with Friday, I've been given a course in it. And it runs from 10 to 12. 10 to 12? Mm. Two hours? Two hours, yeah. Those blocks of hours, is not. Okay. So which, which other one? But is the Tuesday 9, 10 to 9 or to 11, okay? We will create two hours there. Yeah? I have a lecture 12 to 1. On Tuesday? Yeah, and it is tricky to look come from a lecture and then I switch to another. Yes, it is. Not for example, I organize. Uh, what what day, days are suitable for you? First of all, I organize. For me, these two days were okay with me. Yes, according okay. to my time. Mm -hmm. Because Monday I'm having a lecture, Tuesday I'm having a lecture, Wednesday is when we have a seminar, and uh, I don't have my own lecture, so it will be my resting day. Yes. And then uh, Thursday I have a lecture two hours in the evening, mine, and then uh, Friday, no. So this Tuesday and Would Friday, okay. we are okay with so it. But I don't know with it. Now you agree, adjust. These are, you are taking over, you, are you guys cosmetics? Yeah, I'll take another cosmetics. So I also, I also have lectures on Friday, and then uh, Friday. And uh, Saturday, I was trying. So I think it is, it's from two. That's when that lecture is running. So which means your one? Friday lecture is from what time? What time? From ten. Then the third day is from two. No, no, no. First day is out of. I mean, I'm looking at Tuesday and Friday. How we can adjust? Compromise. The, okay. So and Tuesday is okay, Mr. Neku. You said, or you still also have a lecture? Or that's when your day off what somewhere about, else? What about what we next day? On this day, mm -hmm. I don't have any lecture, but I would have loved it. To because be away. then I would be not away, because yes. I have to be here on a seminar. Yes, I see. But, but do your own things. I, the seminar, do other I can things. dodge it if I want. So, that means I would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Every day of the week. If I got an issue, it would be tricky. How is your Tuesday between... Uh, so Tuesday, yeah, we can stretch Tuesday two hours. 
maybe if we start at nine. Mm, yeah, we start at nine. Yeah. Is that okay? He's not comfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will sort out. Maybe we will sort out. Let's pass out the lecture. Yeah. No, but it is not easy to sort it out. He also has his other lectures. We yes, don't know. Yes, we have to have to agree. He has postgraduate lectures and undergraduate. Yes. And so if the, we sort it here, it will the, be. The, the undergraduate ones is electronics and instrumentation. As I said, mm. I teach them Monday 2 to 3 and Tuesday 3 to 4 and Thursday 2 to 3. And Wednesday after I have a lunch is a, is, a, is a practical. Yeah, practicals. Yeah, practicals on, on Wednesdays. Oh. The afternoon. And I'm serious with them now. They have started. Now, first of all, the Friday is not comfortable for me for one hour because I have a lecture. I see. It cannot, uh, you, have, you can have a lecture on Friday for one hour or no? Not at all? We could but your course it. is an elective. It's an elective. And you what can, year, you can fle year. be flexible with these students. Have you met them yet? I have met them. But How many are they? They are 35. That's a big number. What course is that? How, How come uh, I want to physics? Environmental, environmental yeah. yeah. The men, miners also do that too, because uh, mathematical... Mathematical is not possible. is composed but there are only 20. Yes, funny. <laughs> yeah, it was. I asked and they said a bunch of them are going to not major. So could we, what about, can we borrow, instead of me having a Friday, we can have it on Thursday? Thursday I have a lecture from um, 5 to 7. Okay. So these days I've been pulling it to cover some lost time from 4 to 7. So you are saying I teach from I started from two to three. What about morning? Morning I'm free, but mm. well I don't know I'm about. It's okay. Position. Morning is okay with me. On Thursday. Mm. Yeah, we we'll put in the morning. So we. What time? I'm okay. What time in the morning? Ten or nine? Nine or ten? You can see maybe <coughs> ten. Ten. <coughs> 10 to 11 is fine. So that we have Tuesday 10 to 11 and Thursday 10 to 11. But now we need to put two hours somewhere. Uh, don't worry, you can find an hour later. No, I mean two hours. Yeah. yeah, those are two hours. The third hour we can always have. I thought uh, 10, we can make Thursday 10 to 12. Oh, that. Okay. Then uh, ma uh, Tuesday. Tuesday remains uh, ten to eleven. Ten to eleven. Yeah, and that's all. And that's all. And Friday is out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll see. Okay. Okay. Agreed. If I forget, you walk in my office. Remind me. If I'm not present, I will let you know. Mm -hmm. It is a pity we are starting late, but you know these are new program adjustments, and um, some of the courses we put in uh, experimental in a way or trial or, or testing them. It used to be one course unit running for uh, for, for the master's degree. Uh, program uh, as quantum mechanics, but now we split into two parts. Uh, for purposes of this course unit, um, I would like, I'm going to remind you when we meet, uh, means on Saturday, we can start straight away. Uh, I'm going to remind you of what has been covered uh, this is a, now a block of four quantum mechanics. There is level one for the undergraduate, then level two also for the undergraduate, then level one for the postgraduate, and then level two for also postgraduate. So, and I have given a summary of all those four, because I have taught, this is my first time to teach this, this one. But I have taught the other undergraduate 
one and two, and then postgraduate uh, one. And uh, the outlines uh, for the postgraduate uh, is referred to as PHY9107 Advanced Quantum Mechanics 2. And I've given the, the topics which are indicated in the, in the program, in the, in, the, in the syllabus. But over the page, I have given the, the, under, the postgraduate for, uh, for Masters, Advanced Quantum Mechanics 1. And uh, you'll notice that there is an overlap in the topic 5. But even the under, even this postgraduate, some of the things are carried forward from the undergraduate. So as in observables and measurable quantities, quantum dynamics, for example, a lot of things are carried forward uh, with the reviews. Then, but the main thing in the in the post, in the masters is the scattering theory that is generally new uh, to them and also uh, symmetries and the conservation laws, uh, the number of new things which are touched on. And then, of course, uh, relativistic quantum dynamics, uh, quantum mechanics, they are, that is also new for the master's degree. But for the PhD, what they have included, there is a repeat in the relativistic quantum mechanics in a way of a review as an interface. So we are going to spend uh, some time on that, probably one or two, a couple of lectures. Uh, then the new thing is an extension of the Lagrangian field theory. Uh, but even in this, a lot of ideas are borrowed from the quantum me classical mechanics, of the Lagrangian theory. Uh, and then conservation laws and the interaction of charged particles. So some of this material is, is new, some of it will be related to the classical mechanics. So that is, this is the postgraduate quantum mechanics. But I have also indicated what is covered in the undergraduate, because as you are aware, a physics is a building on so there are things which we shall mention which will have been covered. So as a reminder, there is a quantum mechanics one and a quantum mechanics two uh, for you to, to look through. And uh, you will discover that the references, some is an interface of the references. There are some new books, uh, especially you find the Liboff and Griffiths are good books to read, but there is Schiff uh, for the for you, it's an old book, uh, but it has most of the information, uh, nothing, very little is, has changed, uh, but it's also good uh, to read. Messiah has two volumes, I find it difficult, the, the nomenclature is a bit hard, but you know, physics is always like that especially the mechanics, depends on the book. So they adopt a new way, new nomenclature, the symbols especially. We give these references in case you want to cross-check. I have not indicated what is available on the internet. There are a number of things also available uh, which one can find. So that is the, 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 out, the syllabus. And uh, I have produced some, some question papers which are of recent, and I'm going to photocopy <coughs> the postgraduate ones. The undergraduate, I'm not going to bother you, but if you're interested, of course I can give them to you for general review purposes. But for the, post, the masters, I'm going to photocopy the last two sets just to give you to see and uh, it helps if you can attempt those the questions and see uh, if you can have some discussions it would be quite helpful 
for our, our discussions. Uh, so that is generally, <coughs> this is the structure <coughs> of the course. And the, 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 the award, uh, the traditional, uh, the traditional uh, assessment system has been uh, assignments and tests and, and then an examination. Uh, in my own opinion, uh, in, in, with postgraduate, I prefer uh, well to have you can have you can have the tests and assignments. But one of the things I prefer is uh, a class presentation. So you, you look at a problem, one to each student gives a problem, and then presents to the others. It's kind of a discussional uh, problem. It is a new, it's another way of learning. And then the interaction for discussion on the problem. Usually a problem will involve research approach or solution. Uh, it's normally very good. I find it very good. Uh, with the master students, I've given them some of the problems. It has been very interesting <laughs> for them to, to find the solutions and, and do their presentations. So <clears throat> that is one thing I might do. But also to hear your, your inputs, because uh, one of the, beaut the beautiful things about postgraduate, uh, in most universities, they call them as the advisors. So, uh, so, so it's a discussion or approach and uh, to see uh, and interact. Sometimes you discover uh, new new ways of presentations or new problems and approach of solutions. So it gives, it sets the platform for thinking. So I hope I will also do that. Now, what has been, I've not yet put down, but I know in the syllabus, uh, the objectives of this course. <coughs> Traditionally, in many universities, these advanced courses uh, have a content which is very difficult to have the formal examinations that you set a problem for exams, questions, and people begin to answer. Some universities actually don't do that. <coughs> Instead, they do the oral examination. I remember when I was in Canada, I think it was in in classical electrodynamics, our, uh, our instructor, lecturer, gave us an oral examination. You sit and then he asks you questions and you explain. Uh, and he gives you a mark <laughs> from your explanation. This is done in biological sciences, for example, in medical in medicine. The, you explain before the panel uh, and uh, for various uh, cases of patients and they assess you, uh, they call them vivas in some cases. Uh, but it's a very interesting method to assess someone, the knowledge. Sometimes they ask you now about this. Uh, one could ask you, for example, a uh, Feynman's diagrams, the, the scattering, what do you know? You see? So you begin to explain what you know and give examples. Then the lecturer can say, yeah, I think you have good knowledge. Then he can tell you, no, but this you haven't said. This one you haven't and they give you a problem, how would you solve it? So, it's another message, which I think is interesting. Because at our level, at your level, uh, the, the testing may not be as much, but rather uh, to adopt, to get the skills which you need in research and in problem solving, and some of them which you already know. But for this particular course unit, when you are designing it, <coughs> uh, because it used to be one long course unit be, being done at masters, so splitting it was necessary and leave out some of the topics which we think the masters may not need. That is one. Then two, uh, some of the topics we think may be helpful <coughs> for those who are going to do uh, research 
Uh, for example, if you're going to do some work in nuclear physics, then uh, interactions of charged particles, and, and uh, if you're going to do high energy physics, then those, some of those discussions will be helpful. But <coughs> in some research, for example, if you are doing geophysics, some of this knowledge will not be necessary. Uh, the, the geophysics, are, they will be content with electron, electricity and magnetism, or classical dynamics. Um, but whereas those who are doing solid state, I'm not sure of the space science, how much may be applicable, uh, that we shall. So at the end of the day, the main objective of the course is really to consolidate the quantum mechanics which has been learned uh, since the undergraduate course units. Uh, in consolidation, you recall those principles and theories uh, which have been discussed and bring them together. Then two, look at some possible uh, applications as they relate to research in various fields, as I've already given the example of the high energy physics and the related uh, uh, particle physics. And then, of course, uh, to see uh, the possible problems which one can solve, which are beyond the undergraduate uh, knowledge. And some of these uh, may, be, may be good and find some research problem. Uh, we do not have uh, an area here for theoretical physics with the specialization in the, let's say, in solid state or condensed matter or high energy physics. That's why you will apply this, some of these, find these problems. But uh, along the way, we might see in the problems that there could be a researchable problem uh, if you, some of you choose, but in Ecuador has already chosen to work with thin films. And uh, um, in Amasuko, I don't know, you are in space science, but probably you are choosing another area. And, but probably it would be good, some of these for space science, especially the, the high energy uh, particle interactions and the like. So we shall see as we go along to see and consolidate this. But from Thursday, we shall review this relativistic quantum mechanics and the things which have been done in the, under the masters. I don't know, uh, I think Enaku, you did, you did quantum mechanics. Who taught you? Was it me? Well, at what level? At masters. Masters. Who uh, taught you quantum mechanics? It was taught by uh, Dr. Mugambi before you left. Yeah. He taught Glasgow. Uh, Glasgow? Yeah. He didn't do quantum mechanics? I did, but it was by Dr. Mugambi. Mugambi, okay. Yeah. Oh, for me, I taught you Glasgow. Yeah, yeah okay. Yes. So, Mugambi. so you have the, but somehow he touched most of these, and we shall do the, the review. The only emphasis will be on that last bulletin, applications and examples which are relating to the free particle, the electromagnetic potentials. So, but even these, are some of the applications and the methods are already known. Um, so we shall do that. The, the, the klein gordon equation and the Dirac equation, those have already, it will be a review. We have done them already. And most of the reference books uh, uh, have talked much about them. Uh, the best, the ones which I have, Lipoff is good, which are available in the library for reading. Gassior, which uh, is just a reference in the syllabus, I have not seen a copy. Uh, Masbag is an old book. When we were students, this was not yet on the market. <laughs> but when we got it on the market, I bought a copy for myself immediately. But now, of course, 20, 30 years. 40 years is obsolete, it is, it is, no, it is not to date. So the, the more recent ones, uh, Griffiths, I have not looked at it, but I have looked at Skiff. Skiff is also a notebook, very old, uh, but it is easy to read. And uh, of course, Goswami is for the undergraduate, 
you can check it out uh, to see uh, some of those uh, contents. So that is the, what we are going to do. Uh, I hope by question we will be able to solve it, not be surprised. And, uh, but I expect you to think faster than me, you know, at my age. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> yes, so uh, I am, when we had Professor Mugambi, we taught most of these courses all the time, and relating up his song. For us, we were in our areas, solid state and electronics have been my best, I think, and the classical mechanics, the ones I've been teaching longest. But quantum mechanics is a new thing I've adopted, but I've come to enjoy it and like it, especially for the undergraduate, and to understand the systems. Um, the applications, some of them were not there. I took my first group, I took them to, to Kampala Hospital in the, in the Kitante, to see at the MRI machine, uh, to see the quantum mechanics at work was good for them. So some of these things, if we had facilities, probably we'd go to uh, San, 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 in, is it in Berlin or by Belgium, the, the high energy installation which covers how many kilometers for the acceleration of particles. So that's where one would probably appreciate some of these things. So we tend to teach them too theoretical, especially in my times when we were learning quantum mechanics. We had someone called Professor Thompson, who was too bright for us. And, uh, you ask him a question, he would chuckle his mouth, his tongue, and then try to answer and then move on. And so it was, I never really grasped quantum mechanics well. And then when I finished, I went to mathematics. There was this Professor Mugandu uh, to sit in his course, so I thought I would understand it better. But I walked away after one lecture and go back. It was not better, but even worse. <laughs> so, so that is the picture I had in quantum mechanics. Uh, but it's unfortunate that we had that background. But the systems we discuss are very interesting and real. And yeah, I think you will enjoy this course unit and, up and up, top up your knowledge. Uh, but whether you will use it for the research, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's because it is in the syllabus, we have to cover it. We shall see. I will try to see possible uh, live examples in terms of discussions and solutions. I think that's what I can say for now. We shall get into the business uh, according to our timetable will be Thursday. Okay. Any comments and questions? I think I, I, thank you, Professor. It's really good that you are able to, to mentor us again at this level, which you have actually put it in a perspective that, uh, to me, appreciates the, the level of training where I have reached that at this level, we are seen as our devices. And to, I would also like to appreciate the, the, the mode of assessment, especially coursework that you have proposed. I think it, as opposed to the traditional one, assignment, test, I think this one is here for presentations. In my own view, would also welcome it. Uh, the last one, I don't know what it will be when it comes to examination, whether you, you may still be flexible, you might adopt uh, oral or written, maybe I will get to understand the time. Uh, we, I think as we go along, we shall agree. You know, this, um, the, the duty with postgraduate, uh, there is, of course, in this university, we're not supervised. Because at the end of the day, what, we, what I would like is to see if you have grasped the material and uh, have understood what we have been discussing. Now, the mode of exam, actually sometimes I purposely bring questions which I have given to the students in the assignments. Well, probably out of 10 questions, I may bring one, just for 
people to, to have a walk through. Because, not because they are dumb. They really do. They have learned. But to give them, make them pass. Then you may bring some new um, intelligent questions also sometimes. We used to do this with the city, but uh, the general consensus said it was not. <laughs> okay, so we, we abandoned it. So some of the general common sense intelligent questions, but relating to the subject, are also good for the, exam, for the testing of the candidates to appreciate the content. So we shall agree. We can have uh, a part of an exam, but also we can have an oral, and then combine and get out to the mark. The requirements in the rules are that 40% are continuous assessment, and then 60 is examination. But the form of examination just sometimes depends on the, on the instructor. Uh, because he's the one who examines and gives, uh, does the marking, and, and then provides the marks. And that's one problem. In some universities, the assessment is, the examination is done by a panel, so that you don't have, uh, what do you call it, handedness in the instructor. And some instructors can be hand, what is the word? Handedness. You know, <laughs> you know, they can decide to, I know in some, when we did it, there was a time we did an university, by vice chancellor's as a committee, there were problems with religious studies in education and here. You get amazed with what people do. Because an examiner simply looks at a paper and he gives a mark. Uh, they call it, it's a word they use, um, impression, impression, impression marking. You know, I was surprised. <laughs> For us, we don't do that. You know? It is hard to, to make a marking guide for humanities. No, well, it's yes and no. They, they, if you say elucidate the economic yes. problems of the country, the one in who grew up in Gulu has a different perspective from yes. the one who grew up in Kiso. They will but have it, different. Yeah, but even then, one would expect some points. Common points. Yeah, there are some common points, then there are extra points. Mm -hmm. But at least one should put down some of the points which one would expect to see. Mm -hmm. And then leave the others. But to have just have an impression of. You look through and then you uh, put a mark at the top. I was surprised. <laughs> I think three, two thirds of us were from science based. One, the chairman was from the medical school. It was amazing. <laughs> but like you said, like you have a, an approach here with the doctor said and the, the consensus said otherwise. That yes. So sometimes maybe it's a consensus that yes. it becomes a, a principle for a while. But you shall agree in the nature of the. I don't think, I don't think, at, you see people think of failing. I have seen in the undergraduate, there was one particular problem. Did you teach me? didn't. There was one, you find some candidates who are, especially those who get lower second, they, that, that grading is actually is telling. I've had two, two, two students, I supervised one that had had a lower second. There was a big difference between one the lower second and one with an upper second. In articulation of issues, in presentation, there is a big difference. Then these, under, these ones we teach, we come with the lower second. They find some of them, they find difficulty. And, uh, so there was one who was failing, failed almost all the courses. And he was taking retakes, failing the retakes. So the lower second, kind of, why we admit them, there is in as much as poor our assessment is, but, uh, but you are level when you have already, for example, those who have got uppers and above and have got masters, this business of failing is not really realistic. Mm. That's, that's my opinion. One who has qualified at that level and reached that level, like your level, the business of failing is not realistic. Mm. Uh, because, because after all, you can get this knowledge and read from the book. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what we have done. We have, I didn't do an exam with this. <laughs> so, it's just a tradition. Come yeah, to class and so yes. So, so, that thing is not realistic, mm. in my opinion. Okay. So, you have got a class. Yeah. Mm.